you know, sadly never got to see him play as a footballer. I knew him as the Blues manager. I've actually met Trevor Francis. He was in a Boston Tea Party in Solly Hall. It's like a cafe. Yeah. It used to be the Coach House pub for for those that are probably more known for drinking. And um, what a lovely bloke. He, he I went over to him and I said hello. I'm I'm big Birmingham City supporter. Have I was really nervous. I was trembling. Mm. And he he was so kind, so yeah. polite. Really put you at ease with his presence. So yeah. I got to meet him. Would have loved to got the chance to speak to him on the podcast. So welcome back to BCFC Royal Blue. And you'll notice if you followed this channel for any significant amount of time, me and Dad like to respond to all the comments. Uh, we chat to a lot of fans at the stadium and we're always thinking about ways to engage with the subscribers and the followers of the channel. And recently we put a poll out asking for your questions of what you'd like me and Dad to answer and discuss on the podcast. And we're doing this in a two-parter. So today is part one with six questions and then next week there'll be another part two with a further six questions. So Dad, should we get into it? Shall I fire you uh, question one? Uh, yeah. and by, by the way, so before we get into it, I just want to say thank you for the level of engagement we get. Me and Dad often overwhelmed, aren't we, Dad? You know, the responses, yeah, the engagement, the subscribers, the comments, it, it really is amazing. And there was a great response to this as well. We had a lot of questions come through and, uh, you know, it's uh, fantastic to see the uh, questions that uh, fans are asking. Hopefully we can answer a few of them Yeah. and, uh, you know, and, uh, and see where we go. So yeah. uh, and, and, and there's a good mix in there, some serious ones and some sort of lighthearted, jokey ones as well. So really nice balance that you've all sent in, really appreciate it. Yeah. So let's get, let's get it up and running, Dad. So the first one is from Justin Alves. Thank you for your question. Justin and simple straight to the point where do you think Blues will finish this season keep right on I'll keep it short and sweet uh, I think we'll finish top um, I think with the uh, squad that we got um, I know that uh, other fans watching this think oh, how arrogant is that but you know we, we have got a really really strong squad and we've got and that's what uh, the, the uh, club have invested all this money for so that exactly that will happen uh, at the very least we'll get automatic promotion but we've got to finish top with this squad I think so I think we've got Chris Davis he's changed our style of football we've got a good squad I think that's the key and the difference in League One if you can have strength in depth like if if you listen to the Wellens, uh, Wellens from Leighton Orient, he talks about lack of depth, not m not many options. We have that, yeah. and that is a key difference at the League One level. And I agree with you, Dad. I think Blues will win. Uh, I think League I One think a, a point as well on that is that you know we'll find that as the season progresses, where teams start to get injuries and suspensions, yeah, we have got a strong strong squad. So even though that will happen to us as well, we have got top quality players to fill those positions. Absolutely. I think over the season that will really start to show itself, uh, yeah. which obviously is just reinforcing your point Matt yeah. really and also we've played four games we've got ten points and we, we haven't fully gelled yet so really good start to the season for Blues and I think we'll continue and, yeah. and finish first as well yeah absolutely uh, second question that comes from Sam Mullet thank you Sam for uh, your question and they, they say is what uh, sorry, with the match day experience completely changed with all improvements Nighthead have done, what is your favourite part? Do you enjoy the bars outside and food stands or maybe the new DJs uh, or do you dislike anything? I've been getting to the ground early just to get the vibes ha I love the fan zones. I love the fact that fans are now not just coming to go to the ground to get into the ground. There is a, a good community of uh, fans now. In fact, not just a community, they're actually packing the car park and the fan zone. <laughs> uh, the only thing that um, I, and that's not that I dislike, I, I don't mind the DJs, right? But it's just this bang, 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 drum and bass music, whatever they call it now. And it does my head in. Why not? Why not? I know, I know, I know I'm old, I'm a dad, but... Uh, what, why do you want the jam? No, but I wouldn't mind the jam. I love the jam. <laughs> but but what about sort of music that gets the the, the, the crowd yeah, singing? Yeah. You know, we were there anyway. We're having a few beers, we're having some nice food. You know, play a few of the blues songs, you know, get the crowd singing. But some of the stuff, I mean, I, I feel like I'm just, I don't know, I feel like I'm just... A Martian. Know, oh, yeah, yeah, I don't know. It, it just does my head in and, uh, you know, um, so I, to me that's the only thing I'd suggest is to get the DJs to play something that the Blues fans can get involved with Yeah, I mean what really makes me laugh the DJ in Arthur's Corner even when the stadium's empty he, he's like having a rave to himself he's like oh, his arms up. if anybody's seen the wedding singer yeah. <laughs> that's the guy <laughs> <laughs> so true. Um, but just to add a little bit, Dad, I love I love the fan zones. And we said in the post Wigan video that there's a different vibe at the club now, like the togetherness in the fans, the togetherness with the, with the squad and Chris Davis and everything. And I think the fan zones have genuinely made a big difference. We're all together. Everyone's talking. Everyone's having a beer. Everyone's having a chat. And I, I think they make a massive difference. And, you know, I've got here fan zones, better beer. Makes a world of difference. Oh, it's massive. Yeah. Um, food stalls, great food now. A bit expensive, but um, it is what it is. DJs, the light shows and the fireworks as well, you know, before the, the players come out and kick off. Uh, again, it makes a big difference to the atmosphere and the environment, don't And it? the club shop. We've been in the club shop, haven't oh, we? Oh, it's incredible, the club shop. It's completely different, yeah. isn't it? I mean, like, when the, before that was done, it was, it was so small. 
the you know it got packed really quickly. Now the space it looks like a proper a proper superstore. That'll only get better as well as they start to you know um, you know develop in terms of the style and the kitting it out and that. But yeah. but it looks really good as well, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. So there's lo loads that have been spent. I think that's what obviously with the amount of money that uh, Knighthead have spent on the the ground and the facilities, um, it's good to see that what they've done is uh, is is favoured by the fans. Yes. Yeah. You know, even inside the ground, obviously you've got the new the new bar in the um in the cop um the box to box and uh like you mentioned everything everything is a lot better isn't it yeah. there's a lot lot much a lot better vibe around the club absolutely and yeah. and that can't be understated with the amount of things that we get to do as a fan base now mm. you know as i said the fan zones everything around it so I completely agree and uh, yeah i love it and i'm all for it and i'm all for more if they can somehow enhance the match day experience but uh okay let's move on to the next one so this is from old and blue similar theme to the previous question just about the match day experience yeah um so we thought we'd mention that and this is from uh, we love getting these comments don't we dad from yeah. uh, <laughs> apart from the launching of the matrix appreciation society one query i'm loving the pre-match gatherings in the fan zone just wondering how that's going to continue in the winter weather Good question. And one observation, my season ticket is in the main stand. I know it's the oldest part of the ground, but would the board be looking to invest in the facilities on that side of the ground and uh, the fanzos there still, no, still not open? I think uh, the the question about the winter is a good one. Yeah, I like, obviously, I as, as, as the season goes along, it's going to get darker and rain. colder and more rain, isn't yeah. it? And that will, clearly that will will have an impact on people. What you know, people are not going to want to stand around in the rain. But I wonder if the blue fan uh, the Blues will put up any marquees. In the main area, you know, just to uh, just temporary marquees, just to keep it dry. Maybe if you're watching this blues, I mean, you probably already thought about. It. They seem to think of everything, don't they? <laughs> but that'd be a good idea. Put some just like you know, open sided marquees around, just yeah. like they did when we went to Wickham. Yeah. All well, the beer tents were in the marquees, weren't they? Open ended, and that worked quite well. As it happened on that day, it was sunny, so it didn't matter. But if it was raining, you could still have a have a drink in there. So yeah. that could happen. I don't know much about the other fan zone because we don't really go out because we're in the um, Tilton and we we approach from that side. We don't really go around to have a look at the other. Have a look in the next few games. Yeah, but I don't know what the progress is on it because mm. obviously, I, I again, very naive. I didn't know it wasn't open. To be honest, I thought it was all ready and that. But uh, maybe if anybody from the uh, the club is yeah. uh, is watching this all podcast, maybe you could put a comment below. Let us know the the progress of when and what's happening with that. All I've seen is a massive TV get installed. Uh, you know, the Blues fans keep us updated on social media. This massive. I don't even want to guess how many inches it would be. Uh, you know, absolutely huge, and. I like your idea, Dad, a marquee of some kind. And, you know, if you go to beer gardens in the winter, granted, not many people are out in them, but the ones that are open, they have, like, these massive radiators as well, these massive fires that go on in the corner. Yeah, so, yeah. so possibly they could look at getting some heaters in there, some marquees in there. <laughs> Set fire to the marquees. <laughs> 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 it'd, have to be done, it'd have to be done safely, wouldn't it? But, yeah. but, but it, I think it, I think that's actually a really good point because I think you want to maintain the momentum of what they've done. I mean, you don't want everything just to shut down just because it's cold and wet. Yeah. So I think I'm sure the, the Blues would have uh, would have yeah. thought about some. Uh, the second part of that question, Dad, I don't, I don't want this to get lost, and you probably have more knowledge about this than me because you know about the restrictions and the regulations around the main stand and the houses behind it. But it was mentioned about will the owners do any work in, in the main stand, you know, because the cop and the Tilton have had so much work, the box to box, yeah. all the new chairs, the lowers completely done. It does feel like a completely new part of that stadium, doesn't it? What are your thoughts on the main stand? I don't think, that in terms of um, expanding the, the main stand, that's never going to happen because those houses behind are listed so they're protected so you can only go so far I think the restriction would be yeah, that the height of a new stand it would block off the light from those uh, those houses mm -hmm. and also I think as well that the fact that we are going to be moved into a new ground in six, seven however many years I think the, the club will look at what they've invested in the club in the uh, in the facility so far and actually think well actually we've done a lot I'm sure that they would have already done work to the um, uh, various um, bars and stuff hospitality areas in, those, in the main stand uh, but yeah my guess would would be that uh, they probably wouldn't do much more now inside the Tilton and the Cop it's just basically new uh, catering isn't it we've got a complete new beer yeah. uh, the food is better um, you know hot water's a little bit on and off sometimes it's there sometimes it's not I'm finding well, but, well, um... no, well what, what they've done is in the, I don't know it's probably the same all around the ground so rather than put hot water in every tap there's I think in the Tilton toilets that we go into there's like two taps hot water taps I didn't even notice yeah oh, okay. they just said hot water hot oh, water and then and, uh, and the rest the rest, the rest are cold so you can get hot water uh, yeah. uh, if you want it but yeah my guess would be that they'll probably not do too much now to the main stand and just wait for the uh, I think you know the, the, the whole improvements around the ground have been brilliant I mean the, yeah. the main stand looks fabulous to be honest 
honest, with where we sit, you know, the the table, all the seats and everything like that. Yeah, yeah. That's where the press are as well in that stand at the top. So, yeah. so yeah, so my guess would be that we've probably seen uh, the work that's going to be done there yeah. and they wouldn't want to put any more major investment into that. Agreed, yeah. Okay, so that brings us on to our next question. This is from Richard Pincher. Richard, thank you uh, for your question and also always engaging with the channel. We do uh, really appreciate your comments. So, Dad, do you ever purchase the Match Day programme, home and or away? Is the Match Day programme still important or in the age of the smartphone, is it a thing of the past or does it still have a place uh, a place in the modern day game perhaps it needs to move over to the world of technology or would that not work and actually the traditional program should remain as part of the beautiful game keep well, on well years and years ago you know we used to have a program for every game because it was like a souvenir wasn't it you know you'd, you'd buy the program and actually in those days as well before there was smartphones you'd need to get the program to have a look who was the squad was and you know be checking all the fixtures about who we played and when Nowadays, you don't need to do that because the technology is out there. So, I mean, even the um, the match team, you know, the, the, the match day team, we just wait for it to be announced and we have a look at it, don't we? And, yeah. and we do it all through our smartphones now. So, answer to your question, Richard, is that, uh, you know, we used to buy programs but we haven't, we haven't bought programs for years now uh, the clubs still sell them they're about £4 each aren't they yeah and um, but they, they, they've gone up in price for less content uh, but obviously yeah, of course times move on yeah, inflation and, I, and I'm goes guess, up, but... guessing that most people who buy programs are the ones that have always bought programs and they just want a memento of the game yeah. but all it ends up like we did when we moved house years and years ago there was boxes in our loft <laughs> of programs that to be, to be honest with you I very rarely ever referred to and looked at after the match yeah so. it's an interesting one because I think there's a there's still a place for match programmes I think they still have a, a special place in a lot of fans hearts and you know Weirdly enough, I've got a study in, in my house up there, and I did pull out a box, and it did have. I saw the stadium, a light program, Craven Cottage when we went to Fulham. Yeah. There was one from Villa Park when we won. So, you know, the program is an extension of the memories you make. Sometimes you look back on it and you go, "Oh, we, we were there. That was absolutely amazing." But you're right, Richard. I think with technology and the way the world has gone, it just the demand for them has gone low. And times are hard. Four pounds and a, a pretty big addition to your match day experience. I'd, it, ra- yeah, I'd, ra- yeah. I'd rather pay for a beer or, or, or contribute that towards a beer. Now I'm a bit older, but I think as a young kid, I love the programs. And you know, my sister, your daughter, we used to split them, didn't we? Me and Joe, we used to split them every game. Joe would get one, I would get one, and that's the way we sort of. Um, had it to work but yeah definitely a place for them but I think with technology value point they're kind of I think a little bit less important to the match day experience I, I, think, I think you know over time I think we'll see them probably end up completely playing, digitized for, yeah maybe, maybe like um, for you know um, important games uh, semi-finals playoffs cup finals that those type of things I think they, they'll probably still remain yeah. as a souvenir memento but I do think the the average match day, match day program I think it, I think it's on its way out uh, not disputing the fact that some people will still want to buy them uh, yeah. because they've always done this tradition to get a programme. It's almost like cash over contactless, isn't it? There's still place for cash, but a lot of people yeah. now preference contactless payments. It's yeah. like that kind of but, thing. But, 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 but what I would argue as well, everything that I see in a programme, pretty much everything, I can find on, on social my, media on or, or whatever. Or, or, yeah. Yeah. I mean, one, one thing I used to like in the programmes, I used to love reading like the manager's comments yes. or they'd have a player profile. and So, so that, that was always something new you'd get. But again, um, that, that now is just a YouTube video which goes out the day before the, vid- the, yeah, the game, isn't it? So yeah. it's just instead of reading it, you now watch it 24 hours before the game. Yeah. So it's a good question, that actually. It, I, I enjoyed that one when yeah. that one came in. So thank you, Richard. Uh, next question, though, is from Keith Wood, 1659. Um, do you think that with the high quality of players we have signed this season, we have created a team that should get promoted? Blues would have a good squad enough and wouldn't be doing uh, as much business in the summer transfer window. Good podcast. Keep right on, Keith Wood. Thank you, Keith, for your question. Really appreciate uh, it. Uh, yeah, thank you, Keith. Uh, another another um, good question. Well, I think very much linked to our first question about you know where we're finishing the league. Uh, uh, clearly, the, we've got a squad of high quality players are they good enough to get promoted the answer for me is short and sweet I think it's going to be a big resounding yes yeah I can't, can't really add any more yeah. to that again just without repeating myself I think we have a great squad this season I think I mentioned it in, in the earlier in the podcast if I didn't I've mentioned it in previous ones and that's that the depth of a squad in League One makes a massive difference you alluded to injuries suspensions yeah. we won't have we will have that problem but we'll have just as good quality to come off on the bench and replace that makes a yeah. massive difference at yeah. this level so yeah. no doubt we uh, should be winning the league if not nabbing one of those automatic spaces yeah okay last but not least uh, at pulpit 9193 thank you very much for your question if you could have any blues related guest on the podcast past or present who would it be and why I'd have to go for Barry Fry but you'd have to edit the swearing out <laughs> I, I, I think this is a great question because yeah. uh, you know I'd, I'd love to uh, the certain players uh, and 
people uh, who have been around blues for many years that uh, you know you'd love obviously the, the, the names that are banded about you could just without even thinking right. think of oh, Trevor Francis uh, you'd love to get him down Christoph uh, Dugary maybe Christoph you know, Dugary yeah. I, I'd love e even um, players like you know, Darren Carter and ask him the question what was you going through your mind when you took that penalty at the Millennium Stadium that got Blues yeah. uh, promoted. Probably um, don't poo my pants. <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, nervous for him. Uh, uh, I, I, I remember uh, being uh, about ten or eleven in that stage and thinking, yeah. "Oh my word, the weight is on his shoulders." Yeah, uh, uh, even like you know, I was. I'm going to tell you who I've picked uh, just in a moment, but I, but I thought about like you know, real real proper blues players like Kevin Francis. You know, blues, Joe, blues through and through. Joe Bradford, kind of the old uh, school kind of player. There's, there's some there's some real candidates out yeah. there, but uh, I I I've picked um, I've picked two. Because okay. I think uh, one of them is Barry Fry. <laughs> he would be hilarious to get on the podcast. I'd, yeah. I'd love to get him here. Uh, if you are watching Barry, you do wave me. You know, if you want to um, uh, come and uh, join us on the podcast and uh, have a chat with us, we're more than welcome to have you. Uh, I'm sure you can find a way of getting in touch. You'll find our contact details uh, in the uh, uh, on the YouTube page. Uh, but it would be Barry Fry. Uh, but... It's got to be for me. If if I could pick anybody right now to bring on this podcast, it's got to be Tom Wagner. For yeah, me, for me, I I I just you know, um, there's so much you'd want to ask him in terms of all the questions he would have you know uh, answered before in terms of what he's proposing for the club. But um, it'd almost be a, a way of uh, really just um, you know. Uh, Firstly, thanking him for, for for buying the club and uh, you know and everything that they've done so far, and just to get a bit more in depth, really, of his background and why why football club and all this type of thing, you know, stuff that you might have seen that he'd answered before, but sort of tweaking the questions in a slightly different way to give it a little bit more depth in terms of. But I'd love to, I'd love to get Tom Wagner on here. I love that, uh, and that'll be you know that that would be absolutely amazing. Yeah. So I, I mean, I didn't even think of Tom Wagner. I, yeah. I went down the ex footballers kind of yeah, route and yeah. mindset. So I picked two as well. Yeah. And the first one for me is Trevor Francis. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, sadly never got to see him play as a footballer. I knew him as the Blues manager. I've actually met Trevor Francis. He was in a Boston Tea Party in Solly Hall. It's like a cafe. Yeah. It used to be the Coach House pub for for those that are probably more known for drinking. And um, what a lovely bloke. He, he, I went over to him and I said hello. I'm, I'm big Birmingham City supporter. Happy. I was really nervous. I was trembling. Mm -hmm. And he, he was so kind, so yeah. polite. Really put you at ease with his presence. So yeah. I got to meet him. Would have loved to got the chance to speak to him on the podcast. And this one might, I don't know whether this might feel a little bit underwhelming, I'm, I'm not too sure, but he was my idol growing up. I was a left back, uh, he was renowned for his big challenges, his big set pieces. Martin Granger. Martin Granger. Yeah, if I could yeah. get anyone on the podcast, and that, that, that could be possibly a realistic target, I don't know. Yeah. Again, Martin, if you're watching, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, please take me up on that invite. But for me, Martin Granger, just that aggression, Big challenges, solid left foot. My idol for being a left back growing up would love to get Martin Granger on the podcast. Yeah, that, 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 that's a great question. And that, the more you think about it, the more oh, that person and that person is really hard to nail down, isn't it? Uh, but I, you know, uh, you know, I think I'd, I'd love. There's so many different uh, types of uh, people connected to the club that you'd like to get yeah. down here. Yeah. That uh, yeah, I thought that was a really, really good question. I mean, that is the last one, Dad. Anything else to add or, or anything? No, 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 just 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 a thanks again to the uh, response. And just remember, Blues fans, if your question hasn't appeared. Uh, in this uh, podcast we are doing another one which will go out uh, next week uh, where we're doing a, a second bunch of questions from the uh, from the same poll so uh, again thanks very much thanks for your response and as always we just love the uh, the way that you um, communicate with us and uh, and the way that you uh, answer our questions absolutely I mean and when me and dad started this podcast we, we genuinely started it as a bit of fun didn't we dad uh, we didn't expect the subscribers to go up so quickly or the views to go up so the fact that we get to engage with you and you know you send your questions and you know, speaking to you at games, responding to comments, it really is a, a, an honour and, and, and a pleasure to do. So we love it. We love li live and breathe this football club, don't we, Dad? So it really, is, it really is a pleasure. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, please let us know your thoughts and comments uh, in the section below. Is there some answers to these questions that you have of yourself, uh, your own thoughts? Who would you like to sit down with as an example, uh, past, present, uh, from, from the club that you'd like to sort of speak to, or maybe go for a point with? Uh, please let us know in the comment section below. And if you like this video specifically, please don't forget to give us a thumbs up and check us out on our social media channels. We have an expert. Page. We have an Instagram page and we're also now on Spotify so you can listen to us over on that platform as well. And if you haven't already, please don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel so you don't miss any future content all about Birmingham City. And myself and Dad will see you on the next video.